Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be doing a brand review on Dear Claire's and I will be going through all the products that I have tried from the brand over the past few years. Some type of Claire's product has been in rotation in my routine for quite a while and I've come to really love the brand especially when my skin was going through a huge 180 from very oily skin to dry skin while still being very acne prone. I have tried old and new formulations of their products, I have purchased their products, I have been sent some of their products. I haven't tried all of their products but I have tried a decent amount in every single line that they have and since I have been using a few of the products for the past couple of years I figured it's safe to do a full brand review on them. Before we get started if you ever want to keep updated as to when I create new content the best place to follow me is on my Instagram. My handle is always at the top left corner over here or somewhere on the screen. Instagram is the only place where I announce that I have posted any new content. Also I don't like doing haul videos so if I ever receive any PR or purchase anything I will post it in a photo and a couple of you have already commented on what you'd like to see reviewed so that is personally helpful to me because I know what you want to see next and what captures your interest. So if you are interested be sure to follow my Instagram for any new blog posts or videos. Usually my blog posts are more consistent just because I can be in my pajamas and I don't have to do the whole makeup look in order to write a blog post. Alright now let's get right into the brand review. Dear Claire's is a Korean beauty brand and they are about vegan formulations and are cruelty free. Their motto is simple but enough. They combine a lot of popular synthetic as well as natural ingredients in their formulations, all the while making sure everything is skin friendly and contributing to your skin's overall health. Their lineup mostly consists of skincare, but they do have a handful of makeup as well as beauty tools. With this variety, their price range is around medium at most. The least expensive product I have seen is their Cushion Puff for around $1.50 US, whereas their most expensive is their Peptide Serum at $30 US. Even with their price range with individual products, I find I personally get the most bang for my buck when I buy bundles of their products. I've seen on certain online retailers like Wish Trend, Yes Style, and Yes Korean, and probably a bunch of other online Asian beauty sites. So when I need to repurchase something, say the Claire's Supple Preparation Facial Toner, usually it'll come in a pack of two, and it'll also include the Toner Mate 2-in-1 cotton pads. I personally don't like stocking up, so usually a family or friend will want to purchase the same things that I do, in which case the bundles are even better. Also, every time I purchase from any retailer that carries Claire's, I always get a really good handful of samples from them and these samples personally for me can last about a week using day and night. They do have expiry dates at the back. This one here says 2020 so I am confident that by keeping them in my toiletries bag that they will still be good by the time I go on my next vacation. One of the bigger points about Claire's and this is not something that they advertise but it's something positive that I have noticed. It is that they take constructive criticism from their customers and they take that feedback and use it to revamp or come out with new products. A couple of examples of their reformulation is their rich moist soothing line so both of these used to be smaller and a little bit different in formulation the serum for example it used to be pretty sticky upon application and they changed the formula to make sure it's not as sticky and it absorbs into the skin easier with the rich moist soothing cream it used to be in a jar packaging now it's in a tube with more product and they added some more moisturizing ingredients one of the newest releases they have that I personally think is one of their best releases is coming out with a chemical sunscreen they started off with the midday blue sun lotion and while I do like this product it does doesn't leave a white cast it leaves a blue cast either way it's pretty nice under makeup but I think they are discontinuing it because I didn't see it on the official website this one is their newest sunscreen however and it's based on the demand probably based on this and the fact that this had a weird cast to it. I will get more into detail about this later, but it's just an example of a newer product that they came out with. Since I do have quite a handful of products, instead of going in the order of how I would apply it in my skincare, I'm going to run through each product based on the line that it's in. That way you get an idea of what each targeted line is about and what the products do for you. The first line we're going to start off with is their blue line. I have every single product in this line and it is my favorite one. The blue line is all about calming inflammation on the skin and keeping your skin looking healthy and youthful. It's based on the ingredient guaiseline. It's an extract from the chamomile plant. It's originally a dark violet in color, but once it goes through the blending process, it ends up being a nice baby blue like this color. As you can imagine, if it's derived from chamomile, it's pretty calming. It's really good at soothing down any inflammation that you might have, and it's also good for healing any damaged tissue. Based on my experience, I find this line very suitable for acne prone skin. I rely a lot on these products to calm any irritation I have from any skin concerns, and I still get a lot of hormonal breakouts, and I have dry skin still, so I find these products both 
help the inflammation and also keeping my skin nicely moisturized without congesting my skin. So the first product I'm going into is the Midnight Blue Calming Sheet Mask and funny enough it does not have guaiseline in it. However it does have calming ingredients in here which give it merit to be part of the blue line. The soothing ingredients they have in here is erythritol, willow bark extract, allantoin and centella asiatica and they do have tea tree down here at the bottom of the list so even though they don't have guaiseline I find this mask does perform. I like that they use a bamboo charcoal sheet mask it's one of my favorite types of sheet mask it really holds in the essence a lot longer this also comes in two pieces so I find it fits my face a lot better than the previous cotton one that they used to have this lasts for around 20 minutes at best until you have to take it off and I did notice some hormonal breakouts that I got in my jaw that were cystic and pretty big they definitely calmed down and they didn't hurt as much once I finished up with this mask next product is the midnight blue youth activating drop this is the most expensive product in their line this is the one that is 30 US dollars when you look at it at first you're thinking wow $30 for 20 mils for a peptide serum that's pretty expensive but what I really like about this is that it's only 10 ingredients and the first two ingredients are the peptides themselves I'm pretty impressed with this peptide serum because despite having a watery formula you only need a little bit to cover your entire face and neck it quickly makes my skin feel very soft and actually what I've been liking to use this for is after I go in with different on my skin so in my skincare routine I use different at the very end of my nighttime routine now I use different after I dry my face from cleansing and and then I go in with this just to ensure that I don't get any irritation and my skin doesn't feel super dry. This is my second bottle of this product and I kind of have a love-hate for it. I definitely like it because it is moisturizing and it does soothe my skin. However, it's meant to be an anti-aging product in Claire's line and I don't really think it's doing much for anti-aging other than just moisturizing my skin. I want to get into this in another video but I did start microneedling again and I want to try using this serum to see if it'll benefit more that way rather than just applying it with out any of those micro wounds. Last of the line is the Midnight Blue Calming Cream. This one's a 30 ml size and this one is the 60 ml. I thought this was limited edition which is why I purchased it but it's been on the site for a little bit so I don't know if they're keeping this permanently or not. Either way in which case I definitely recommend you getting the full size anyways but the jar is convenient when you want to travel. I find this the cream version of the Youth Activating Drop because this one also has peptides and graiseline. I like it better though because it has other ingredients that I prefer such as niacinamide, centella asiatica, and ceramide. This is my second tub of this cream and this will be my third purchase of the Midnight Blue Calming Cream. I find this essential in my skincare routine. This was the first product in the blue line and I find it one of the best. This was really good at calming any of the really big cystic breakouts that I had that you would just feel heat and pain emanating from. I found applying a good layer of this to my chin really cooled and calmed the area down and I wouldn't have any pain anymore coming from the cystic marks because sometimes when you move your face and you have cystic acne it does hurt a little bit so this one really helped to take that away and if I wasn't wearing makeup this area would be so red and I would have to use so much makeup to cover it so it really helped with that as well this is also really good if you have any red areas from feeling too flushed like pretty much the center of the cheeks here this is meant to be more as a spot treatment I've definitely used it on my entire face at one point when I kind of experimented too much with skincare let's say and if this is permanent you might want to check it out as an actual moisturizer for the face it's more so suited as a spot treatment but you can definitely give it a try next is the freshly juiced line I would say what differentiates this from the blue line because they both seem to contribute to skin's overall health but I find these ones have more active ingredients so if you do have really sensitive skin you might want to be cautious when using these because they're not strictly for calming the skin so the first product is the soft airy UV Essence SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. This is actually not even labeled freshly juiced, it's labeled soft airy, so it just has the same packaging as freshly juiced. This is their chemical sunscreen. It's one of their latest products and I also think it's one of their best products that they have. The UV filters in here are Uvenol A plus and Uvenol T150. The filters are photostable meaning they don't degrade in the sun and since it does have a water-based gel texture it really is a nice airy texture on the skin. If you are oily skin, I actually think you could get away with this as a moisturizer as well. On top of it being a cosmetically elegant sunscreen, this does not sting my eyes at all. Usually I need to put a physical sunscreen around my eyes because they are quite sensitive, but I find with this one I could put it around my eyes and be worry free. It feels really light on the skin and doesn't leave a greasy residue at all and I truly do think this is for all skin types. The next product is their freshly juiced vitamin drop. Um, I'm holding it like this because as you can see it is oxidized. I'm not 
partly upset that I didn't finish all the product because I found it didn't really do much for me and I ended up moving on to other products and forgetting about this. This is a vitamin C serum and has 5% ascorbic acid. For me, I feel like the overall health of my skin got a lot better. It was definitely more hydrated, more glowy looking, more even tone, less problematic looking. But the main thing I wanted it to do, which was clear my skin of red marks, did not work. I gave this a good run for about three months and I didn't notice any difference at all in that department. So that's why I kind of put it on the back burner to try something else to help with those marks. I wouldn't discredit this entirely if you are looking for a vitamin C serum that does feel like a dry oil, it's fairly hydrating, evens up your skin, brightens your skin, all that stuff. Definitely go for this. It has worked for other people with their hyperpigmentation, but for me it just didn't work. Last product in the Freshly Juiced line is their vitamin E mask and this is probably my favorite sleeping mask I've ever tried. Usually with sleeping masks, I found that all they did was sit on the surface of the skin. They made me look pretty greasy in the morning. They enlarged my pores and they made me congested. I've tried a handful of different sleeping masks. None of them seem to work out, but this one has actually performed really well. It moisturizes my skin even in the cold winter months. Instantly, my skin looks really nice and glowy and even toned. I feel like my pores do look smaller because this does have 2% niacinamide in it and it does not break me out. So if you are acne prone and dry skin, definitely give this one a look if you are looking for something to use at night that's a bit heavier, but you don't want that congested feeling. This has been sent to me in PR twice, but honestly, if I didn't get the second one, I was going to repurchase it anyways. It's just fortunate that I ended up getting it complimentary. Next line is the Rich Moist Soothing line, and I only have two products from the line, so I have the serum and the soothing cream. These were actually the first two products I ever tried from Claire's alongside the Supple Preparation facial toner. These came in real handy when my skin was transitioning from oily to dry while still being acne prone. At the time I found it really hard to find products that would moisturize my skin enough without breaking me out and I found these two did the trick. When I was watching Leah Yu's review on Clear, she actually pointed out that this had similar ingredients to the Supple Preparation facial toner. So it has the Phyto Oligo, the Beta Glucan, the Sodium Ascorbyl Phosphate, the Sodium Hyaluronic, some of the peptides, all that stuff. Even with the similar ingredients and kind of the same concept as to what it does, I actually find I prefer the toner over this one. Even though they did improve the formulation, it's not as sticky and it sinks into the skin faster, I find it just doesn't do much for me. It's not just this serum per se, I find anything that is just a hyaluronic acid serum or just a serum strictly for hydrating, it just doesn't do much for my skin and I want something a little bit more multi-purpose. If you do have sensitive skin and you need something to start off with, like this isn't bad at all, I didn't experience any bad reaction from it and it did what it says it's going to do. I just personally don't care for strictly hydrating serums. I find I could just get a better moisturizer or just go with the Galactomyces Essence, which I have been using, that I find does a lot more for my skin. Last product I have is the Rich Moist Soothing Cream. This one is a glycerin-based moisturizer with sodium hyaluronate, beta-glucan, shea butter, jojoba oil, ceramide, and a variety of plant extracts. Love this moisturizer because it definitely comforted my skin, gave it the moisture it needed without making my skin feel like it was very congested and it was going to break out. I repurchased this a few times. I find it good for any season, for any skin type, depending on the amount that you use. However, since I discovered CeraVe's PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion, I find myself gravitating towards that more than this one. I find my skin is a lot more balanced than it used to be and I really like the fact that it has 4% niacinamide. That's really a key ingredient that I have found that really benefits my skin so I want to stick to that. Either way, I find this a great moisturizer that does a lot of good for your skin and actually my friend who has psoriasis really likes using this as well and she doesn't experience any flare-ups or any negative reactions from using this moisturizer. Next line is the Supple Preparation facial line. So this is pretty similar to what the Rich Moist Soothing line does, only the finish is a lot lighter. I'm just going to get this one out of the way. It's the Clear Supple Preparation Facial Toner. This is my third bottle of this toner. I'm actually debating right now whether to get rid of toners in my routine just to make it more minimal, but I am having a hard time wanting to give this up. If you want to see a full review on this toner compared to the original one, I did do a dedicated review on that. I'll leave it up in the cards for you to check out. This is a great simple hydrating toner, definitely a good place to start if you want to incorporate it into your routine. The reason I actually started getting more into clears and have so many products from them is because of this toner 
and this moisturizer but i found this one just really made my skin supple it made it a little bit more even tone my skin a little bit more hydrated more plump like i mentioned this has similar ingredients to the rich moist soothing serum but i guess i prefer the vehicle of the ingredients better in this type of formula it's really your own personal preference i just found that this has served me in my skincare a lot more than the serum has honestly i can't rave about this toner enough and you're probably all tired of hearing it so i'm just going to put it away now well compliments that toner however is this this is the toner mate two-in-one cotton pads i never considered cotton pad as a huge deal like a lot of people seem to really like the shiseido cotton pads and i never really bothered to want to purchase them these however have changed my mind completely of the way i see cotton pads there are two different types in here there is a compressed cotton pad and this is a spongy pulp rayon pad. I find I reach for the compressed one when I feel like I have some type of residue on my skin and I just need to give it an extra wipe. Whereas with the spongy one, as you can imagine, I want to saturate my skin more with my hydrating toner or essence. And what's good about these cotton pads is that you could split them in half. So you not only have 120 cotton pads, but you have 240 uses of these cotton pads. If I had to opt for one, I definitely like the spongy one more. I find myself reaching for them a lot more than the compressed ones. Either way both are really handy to have and I definitely recommend them. Last item I have in the supple preparation line is their all over lotion. This is just a sample and I've tried a couple of other samples of this as well. This pretty much has the exact same ingredients as the rich moist soothing cream. If anything the order is a little bit different as well as the finish. I used this on my body and it definitely didn't leave my skin feeling super dry but the finish was very light and almost undetectable especially compared to the rich moist soothing cream which I find has a thicker consistency and leaves more more of a glowy finish on the skin whereas the all over lotion is runnier and not as thick i've also used this on my face i do find it a little bit more moisturizing than the cerave pm facial moisturizing lotion but again i'm all about that niacinamide this doesn't have it in it otherwise this would have been a great bang for my buck this does come in a large tube so if you are say normal maybe leaning on oily skin you might want to consider this as your moisturizer instead of the soothing cream if you are dry skin you could use this as a facial moisturizer as well but you'll definitely want to layer up other high Hydrators. Whereas with this one, you don't really need to do that. I find this one moisturizes well enough without layering so many hydrators. All right, next line is the Gentle Black Cleansing line. As the name suggests, it's about cleansers and similar to the blue line where it kind of focuses on a key ingredient. This line has black ingredients listed as their highlighted ingredients. For this one, it is black currant seed oil. I've also seen charcoal as well as black sugar in their other cleansers of this line. As I just said, this has black currant seed oil. It's pretty soothing and moisturizing. It is also high in linoleic acid which makes it suitable for any problematic skin types. With cleansing oils I usually associate them to be thinner and more catered towards oily skin types but with this cleansing oil I do think drier skin types will like it as well because I do find it a little bit richer when I use it. Again it's just a sample but I also tried a handful of them. Even though this is a cleansing oil and it does emulsify once it's in contact with water and it turns into a milky consistency I find it takes a hell of a time to remove it unless you go in with a wet towel. Even going in with a wet towel to remove it my skin is is always left feeling smooth and moisturized but it does feel like it's some type of residue on my skin also there's a point i forgot to mention at the beginning which is that clairs do not use artificial fragrances and pretty much all the skincare that i have mentioned they use a blend of essential oils it's kind of like their custom scent with this one however when i went to check the ingredients list this is the only one that had fragrance listed on it either way the scent is very light it doesn't smell artificial it's at the end of the ingredients list and also it's in a cleanser so i personally don't think it's a big deal for myself but if you are sensitive to artificial fragrance in particular then this one out of the ones I have anyways has it. Last line I'm going to talk about in my Claire skincare collection is the makeup line and I only have one item. They only have a few makeup products but I do have the more popular one and that is the illuminating supple blemish cream. This one already impressed me by the fact that it did not have the gray cast. It actually has a pretty neutral undertone to it. Even though this does have lighter coverage it does make your skin look really nice and natural. On my skin but better type of look and you definitely do not look flat. This definitely does brighten up my skin tone, the color evens out and I do have a subtle type of glow to the skin. When I first bought this I was
was a little bit paler so I could pass it off more easily. Even now with the colder months, I could still pass this off as my only base if I really wanted to. I find however, since my body has been maintaining a medium, sort of medium tan color, the contrast is a bit too much for me. So instead what I do is I mix this in with my It Cosmetic CC Cream when I find that gets too dark for me. When I first bought that CC Cream, I did notice it on my neck a little bit. So I did mix it in with this to lighten up the color. So even though this doesn't match my skin tone completely, I could definitely wear it underneath a base of makeup. Like it's okay as a primer, but I find because it does a little bit of the blurring, adds a little bit of the subtle glow and provides some evenness already, it does take out the amount that you'll have to use with your foundation. And that is it for this brand review of Claire's. Overall, I find the formulas pretty good. Everything pretty much contributes to your skin's overall health. Considering my current skin type right now and what my needs are, I would say my top recommendations are one, two, three. Claire's Supple Preparation Facial Toner, we all know that. I'm gonna put this away right now. The Claire's Vitamin E Mask, I find this is not only a great moisturizing overnight mask, for those of you with acne prone skin. But if you find that your skin is so dry and that your home environment is so dry, even with a humidifier that you wake up in the morning feeling very parched, give this one a try. Claire's Midnight Blue Calming Cream. Keep in mind, this is supposed to be a spot treatment, which is why I would only put it on inflamed areas of my chin or parts of my face. I've heard of some people using it as a moisturizer and if you wanna use it for such a case, then definitely go for the fuller size. And last but not least, the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence SPF 50 PA4+. Seriously, one of the best chemical sunscreens on the market. Not only does it have the photostable UV filters, this is a cosmetically elegant formula. It does not sting my eyes. And also the value of what you're getting with this with the amount I find is really good as well. Last but not least, the Toner Mate 2-in-1 cotton pads. Seriously, I never knew cotton pads could be so good until I tried these ones. And while we're on the subject of my top recommendations, I think I'm also going to throw these ones in. Definitely the Rich Moist Soothing Cream. I found no other moisturizer at the time that really helped with my skin when it was transitioning from oily to dry without breaking me out. And the Midnight Blue Calming Sheet Mask because I do find it a really big upgrade compared to the cotton sheet mask that they used to have. This has been really good for my breakouts and also moisturizing my skin and I am personally a fan of bamboo charcoal sheet masks. I use the brand Boo Bamboo and this is pretty much the key beauty option. And that is it for this video. I really hope that you found it informative and helpful if you were deciding on which Claire's products to try out. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If I do have new content coming out, I always announce it on my Instagram and my handle is right up here as well in the description box down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions about the products or if you want to recommend me something else from Claire's that I haven't tried yet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Ciao.